Hi everyone, today we are going to continue with our third module, Natural Disasters. We will prepare to read Quaking Earth, Racing Waves by Rachel Young. So this is an informational text. And before we begin reading, what I'd like you to do is flip through some of the pages of the story, which begins on page 205 in your Into Reading book. You'll notice a few things about how this informational text is set up. As you flip through the pages, you'll see subheadings. So we'll notice that this informational text is organized so that I, different ideas are underneath a different subheading. We'll also see that this informational text has some science and social studies wor words that are specific to the topic. We will also see that they've included diagrams and photos with captions and maps to help us understand the subjects. Our learning target for today is I can use reading strategies throughout the reading process to monitor comprehension. So one of the ways that you can monitor your comprehension is by summarizing a section of the text looking at the headings and the subheadings, then finding the main idea. What is the author really trying to help me understand in this section? Then getting rid of any unnecessary information, removing repeated information, replacing lists of words with general wording. Then you're going to write a short topic sentence and then combine topic sentence, sentences into a short summary. We're going to keep thinking about our essential question, how can learning about natural disasters make us safer? In July 2004, the village school on Tello Island, Indonesia, had a visitor with a startling story to tell. As the students in their red and white uniforms sat quietly listening, geologist Kerry Say explained that under the ocean, 60 miles from their island, was a ticking time bomb. For hundreds of years, the Sunda Megathrust Fault had been storing energy that would be released in massive undersea earthquakes. The powerful quakes would likely cause tsunamis, fast moving waves that could wipe out the entire seaside village. The students and their teachers were surprised by Say's warnings. They'd never felt any giant earthquakes or seen tsunami waves. How did he know that the earth was going to shake? Say explained that for more than a decade, scientists from the California Institute of Technology had been studying a section of the fault just to the south. They'd figured out that major earthquakes shook the region about every 200 years. The last big quake was in the early 1800s, which meant another could come at any time. Though Say couldn't say exactly what, when it would happen, he was almost certain that there would be at least one major earthquake in the students' lifetimes. But no one could have known that the next big quake would hit just a few months later. Rising corals. Scientists know a lot about earthquakes after they happen, but they can't predict what hour, day, year, or even decade an earthquake will hit. So how did Carrie say no to warn the Tello Islanders that an earthquake might happen soon? He read the corals. In the Indian Ocean, big corals called poirites grow from the sea floor to the water's surface, then outward. The ocean floor sinks slowly between earthquakes, dragging the coral down, then rises quickly during a quake, raising the coral up again. Over hundreds of years, all this up and down causes the coral to grow outward in donut shaped rings. Say discovered that by looking at the growth patterns of poirite's coral, 
heads near the fault, he could pinpoint the dates of past earthquakes and maybe find a pattern that would help predict for future quakes. Using underwater chainsaws, Say and other scientists sliced off slabs of coral heads that were hundreds of years old. Sure enough, they found that on a section of the fault just to the north of the Mentaway Islands and just to the south of Tello, earthquakes occurred in pairs about every 200 years. One pair of quakes hit in the 1300s, another in the 1500s, a third in 1797 and 1833, almost 200 years ago. According to the corals, it was time for another big quake. And then when we look at this graphic, it tells us when it reaches the ocean surface, a coral head stops growing upward. Only the sides, which are still underwater, continue to grow outward in rings, like the growth rings of a tree. You can tell how old a coral is by counting the rings. Between earthquakes, the ocean floor is slowly sinking, and the coral, which is attached to the ocean floor, is sinking too. The coral head drops below the waterline, and the sides grow up to the water surface. During an earthquake, part of the ocean floor springs up and some coral heads are lifted high out of the water. The section of coral above the sea dies while the part still under the sea keeps growing. From above, the coral looks a little like a little donut inside a series of bigger ones. So we're going to stop here today, and your task is going to be to summarize this section. What is the author trying to tell us? What's the main idea of these two pages? Who is the text mostly about? And what information are they trying to convey?